In the Dominican Republic, a powerful poison called Tres Pasitos sits right on the shelf where anybody can grab it. Tres Pasitos means three little steps. The idea is rats eat it, take three steps, and they're dead. It's deadly for humans, too. That's why it's banned in the U.S. and a lot of other countries. But in the Dominican Republic, the poison still sits right on the shelf. This had a huge effect on a woman named Mayra. She has seen the dangerous effects of Tres Pasitos with her own eyes. In the mid-1990s, Mayra Beltran de Ortiz gave the impression of having a picture-perfect life. She was vice president of a company that managed several health clubs in Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. I had this big executive office, a secretary, and assistants. Everyone saw me as a very important person. A lot of women admired me. I had a lot of employees, a lot of power. I felt important, and I felt like I had everything under control. That sense of control extended to her home as well. We were very close friends, but she always, always like, were pushing us to be excellent students. I felt like uh, I had a picture-perfect life. I, at least I wanted everyone to think I had a picture-perfect life. While trying to maintain that sense of control, Mayra sometimes unleashed a barrage of harsh words towards her husband, Federico. When Mayra talked to me in that way, she did it in a very forceful way. And I viewed it as a, that it was a power struggle where she wanted to impose her position and she didn't understand my reasons. They had argued a lot as he transitioned from being a successful banker to getting into the printing business. I remember saying to him, you don't know anything about printing. I was very strong and disrespectful. I thought I was right, and so my opinions were very direct. And I simply just didn't listen to her. After a couple failed attempts at running the printing business, Federico had begun planning on selling condominiums. At this point, I stopped asking questions about his business, mainly because I didn't want to fight all the time. I convinced myself things were going well. Underneath this picture-perfect image, Mayra and Federico were living isolated lives while under the same roof. We appear to be a model family, but in reality, everything wasn't picture-perfect. Because Mayra was so focused on control, she had never admitted any need to God or surrendered her life to Him. We went to church, but for me, it was just a tradition. I used to say uh, the Lord's Prayer because my father had taught it to me, but for me it was like a lucky charm. If I pray, maybe God will accept me. Everything changed when a friend of our family walked into my office one day. He had paid my husband for an apartment, but the apartment was never built. So for months, he had tried to get the money back from my husband. He finally tried coming to talk with me, assuming I knew about my husband's business. But of course, I didn't. So I remember calling my husband, and he told me this friend had paid for an apartment. And instead of building it, Federico had used that money to pay debts. At that point, I lost it. I said, are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? What are you thinking? I'm ashamed. I belittled him and made him feel worthless. One of the things I regret the most is I told him it would be better if he were dead. Everything I had done, everything I had said had been a lie. I couldn't see her. I couldn't face my children. I couldn't look them in the eyes.
when I walk in the door, I saw Federico sitting on the couch, watching TV with a glass of vodka in his hand. Uh, I said, now you drink on weekdays and watch TV? I thought he was wasting time when he should have been working. Uh, and as I passed by the table, I saw a white envelope with my name on it. Federico had written a three-page letter. It described all of his debt, which was far worse than Maida had realized. He had borrowed money from banks, but he had also borrowed from informal money lenders at very high rates. These were very dangerous people. I wrote that she should go out of the country, that she should go to Puerto Rico, and she'd start a new life. In the letter, Federico said that he had taken rat poison because he considered himself a rat. I felt like a rat. And having done so many things. As soon as I realized it was a suicide note, I ran to him and found that he was still alive. And then she called me to my job and she told me, your father tried to suicide. When we were finally able to visit Federico, he was like a prisoner in a room with no windows. The doctors thought uh, he was in danger of trying to kill himself again. While he was recuperating, his sister was reading the Bible to him constantly. He realized he didn't have to be successful to have value. He didn't have to be poisoned like a rat, but he could be forgiven and made new. Back at home, I knelt down and prayed. It was like a moment of spiritual awakening for me when I truly surrendered to the Lord. Maida, the woman who always looked like everything was under control, finally admitted that she was a sinner, that no picture-perfect outside could make up for a rebellious heart. She surrendered her life to God, knowing that her sin was forgiven because of the payment Christ had made on the cross and Federico experienced the same transformation. And at that moment, I felt that I had been forgiven too. Forgiven by God. It was like a special, special, special day. And he went to hug me and crying, asking for forgiveness. And so the first thing I did was to go ask forgiveness of Maida and my, my children. And then I went person by person to those who I had deceived or in some way wronged, and I asked their forgiveness. I went to my husband and asked for his forgiveness for my harsh words, and it's amazing. I was even forgiven by God and by my husband for saying, I wish you were dead. Maida had admitted her need to surrender everything to the Lord. But that process of surrender still needed to be worked out into every part of her life. While paying off debt, Maida still tried to maintain control of many parts of her life, including her marriage. It made me feel that I wasn't covering the responsibilities that the man ought to, ought to cover. Maida managed 200 employees at her company, and when she came home, she was still the boss. I was still taking control. And I started to think of the health club as my provider. My job was becoming my God. In 2008, God deeply challenged Maida to take a huge step in the process of surrender. She was part of a large group of women that had traveled from Santo Domingo to Chicago for the Revive Our Hearts Conference, True Woman 08. I had never been to a conference where women were seeking the Lord together. I don't know of uh, any woman from the Dominican Republic who wasn't deeply affected by True Woman. During True Woman 08, my mom and I, at night, we talked about everything, all the ideas of womanhood. It was completely new for me, and it, it really changed my life, my perspective as a woman. I was convicted that my job had become an idol, 
I was not honoring God by putting my trust in my job and by being in charge of my home. I said, I don't want what I am. I am intoxicated. My job is like a drug. God is my provider, not my job. And I could see that seeking the Lord was far better than seeking success at a health club. When I came home from True Woman, I resigned from my job. My last day there was December the 31st, 2008. As soon as Mayra resigned, Federico was given the opportunity to manage an office building. God provided what we needed right when we needed it. Then he started managing two more buildings. When I gave up the idol of my job, my husband's business started to grow. Federico now owns his own successful business, managing several properties. And when I see that Maida also makes an effort on her side to be the woman that God has designed her to be, it gives me an incentive to, to change in my life to be the man God designed me to be. The process has not been easy. I am still growing. I am learning to talk to him with more respect. And now, God is using Mayra and Federico's story to help other couples. They lead a group at their church, and Mayra counsels a lot of women with tough marriage situations. For so many years, we were seeking so many things. We were seeking a better life. We were seeking money and success. I was seeking respect. I was seeking control. Through all the things we've been through, I have discovered that nothing satisfies except for knowing God. I want to spend the rest of my life seeking Him.